This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer, what leads up to someone doing something like this? Yes. What are the influences in their lives? If he went and met with the parents yeah. of the kid that tried to kill him and all of branched it, I think that would pay so many dividends. So let's imagine that we agree with him. Those are your enemies. What are we supposed to do with our enemies? I think people just get lost in the idea that you're against him. How can you not forgive and, and allow him to go on with his life? He can't. He's go on forgiven. With he can go on with his life. He is forgiven. Yeah. He's find a different job. Yes. Just own it. And the more you own it, and the quicker you just own it, the more it goes away because people know you're human. We get. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 242. Inflation's real. I just got back from Cabo. Zach, how's it going? The elephant in the room just got a little lighter. Okay. Andy? <laughs> you got hot on that thing! Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's all it's all say say prayer. Was awkward. <laughs> I think Andy was waiting for me to throw to him, and yeah. so we just look at each other. <laughs> oh, <you're> good. <laughs> this is our first time doing this. What's happening? Welcome just a, to Podcasting yeah, 101. A prayer, oh my God. a prayer for Andy. I saw Amen. a video reaction of her, and the peop- and the lady who was reacting to her said, you know why people like her? It's because of her personality. And they're probably right. Yeah, sure. You Adorable. Guys- if you know, you know, and if you don't, don't no, Google it. No. Or do. It's it's relative. No, it's... It, it's, it's yeah, well, I don't even know what to say. Before, anyway, before we go further, I would like to thank Matt for being on the ones and zeros as our producer. Oh, uh, sitting in as producer, Matt. Thank you. My whole name, Zach, huh? <laughs> yeah, now everyone Sorry. will know who you are. You me, I'll beep it out if you want. Uh, yes, thank you. And don't worry if you get fired. It's part of the job. Yeah, every time. That's yeah. the rumor. And if you're not fired, you've done something wrong. And if you are fired, you've done something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> It's unwinnable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. W- losing is the only way to win. It is truly a Christian position. You're That's not right. going to, yeah, you will not survive. You yeah. will not survive tonight, man. Yep, exactly. What, All right. you, what others count as gain, you count as loss, and the reverse is true. It's, but, it's foolishness to those who are perishing, but just trust us, Matt. The last shall be first. <laughs> Did you just move? Did you move in your chair? The fired shall be hired. Did you just uh, move? Yeah. You're fired. I, I did. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, yes. who are we and what do we do? We are Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Thank you for joining us today, listener. appreciate you tuning in. If you're on YouTube, I uh, hope you're enjoying the video and the production. Thank you for the comments in the comments about the lovely production here. Uh, we try. Um, I am Andy McCraw, joined by Zach Crater and Jeff Pearson. We are Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We like to have serious conversations about faith without taking ourselves too seriously. And if this is something that you enjoy and you like to see uh, some guys doing arm check, uh, armchair theology, sitting back and uh, chatting about faith and life, then uh, send this to one other person that you know who you think might like this. Press that little share button. And we'll take the likes and subscribe because it helps the channel grow. And it does it. that's what we want to do. We want to grow this channel and make more and more content so that we can quit our jobs and just uh, annoy people in the comment section full time. Boy, are they annoyed, which we will get to. We got comments coming up. Hey, and I've listened right here. I'm drinking water. Oh, but you never know. But not in a judgmental way, like towards us. (laughs) Or is it? It's just out of shame. It's purely out of shame that he's drinking water and not booze. But at some point, Jesus walks in. This could turn to grape juice. (laughs) Yep. That's how it worked. This is a kid's podcast. Jesus saved the good stuff for last. So, um, real quick, I just want to mention a a few recent subscribers to the YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Belinda Buchanan, Carol Susan, Starla Patterson, Ryan Morrison, and Rocket Like a Rad Redhead. Amazing. These are... Four out of five are women. Every week, we're getting more and more. (laughs) Four or five are, are women or men who have been forced by their wives to have a shared account. This is a thing. <laughs> it is a Especially thing. Especially in Christian culture. Yeah. Because you you just want to be safe. I And I'm not dissing it. The shared email address, the shared Facebook account, um, it happens. It's real. Yeah. And it's, sometimes it's necessary depending on one's proclivities. Like That's true. Yeah. You know, I just it's wanna, like the bill, <clears throat> a version of the Billy Graham rule. Like, yeah. It's like, keep things safe. I just want to talk to the Susan family. The, the Carol, Carol Susan. Carol Susan. Carol Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Carol Susan. Mr. and Mrs. Carol Susan. 
What if it's a pair of ladies? A pair of lady, like a like like a pair. The Paralympics pair of ladies. Oh, okay. two ladies. Okay. All right. You wear cords. I almost wore cords. That's something we can just move on You know on what's from. fun? You know what's fun, Zach? Yeah. Every time I wear these cords. People touch you? You say something. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. No, you, I come, like, you come in on I my like cords. I like cords. He likes a good cord, people. He enjoys <laughs> oh. a good cord. <laughs> oh. Okay. So it, <laughs> speaking of the elephant in the room, it would be difficult to record an episode. Now, this what's the date today? This is Tuesday. 16th? 16th, 17th. It's a few days after... Producer oh, Matt, what, right, right. what's the date? Former 16th. president. 16th. Yes. June 16th. July 16th. Uh, yes, July. We kind of have to talk about it, and we're yeah. not going to... I don't think we're going to like do a full breakdown. I've, I've seen some cool videos of like all the angles and the, all the question marks that are happening, um, but we got to talk about it, and the best way we can talk about it is maybe... I love that you haven't actually said it. Oh, I don't want to say the word. <laughs> President Trump got shot at. Oh, okay. It is funny to see. Like a lot of people are like blurring out certain letters of the word. Oh, as, ha, 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 ha. really? Because I think sometimes the algorithm doesn't like those words. Oh, because Christians don't like to say ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's probably why. And it's in there twice. That's d- twice as bad. Yeah, nothing says double ass like the word assassination. And I'm we're a- not those Christians. So some say we're not even Christians. Some so, say. So- <laughs> Uh, all right, but before we get started on that, Matt, if you could engage the picture in picture. <laughs> all right, yeah, hit hit the P. I and feel P. like we need to honor the country. All right, if your internet will kick in, my internet is the best. Oh, come on, Ingrid Andres, this Ingrid Andres, four-time Grammy nominee. Yep, and. Um, on her profile pit page, it says four-time Grammy loser, which I like. Oh, I like that. That's, yeah, yeah. That's solid. I'm going to restart DuckDuckGo right now. See what happens. I feel like DuckDuckGo has been having some problems. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is the all-star game. Home Run Derby. Home Run Derby. By the dawn's early not bad. Not bad. She's in there. That's great. That's We're in a different key now. Gunnar Henderson. He's a man. Oh. Oh. She's that? still there. She's in key. Okay. Oh, this is the. Oh, the She's so young, adorable. Four time Grammy oh. nominee. And the echo and the delay. <laughs> Alex Bohm's face. What just? What's happening? The bombs bursting in air. Get through the Yikes! That's her own style. I can hear its nerves. Oh I can gosh. hear it. I can totally hear it. What was that? I don't know, the crowd doing something. Wait, shh. okay. Oh, okay. So I, I, this, the purpose of playing this is not to just make fun of her, but it did, it, it, it did blow up. It, this is before the home run derby. Okay. Right. Okay. She's a country singer. Oh, really? What's her name? Ingrid Andres. 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 Okay. Four-time Grammy nominee, as she says, four-time Grammy loser, which I love. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, we could all dream or gra- of Grammy lo- runner-up. I don't know. We could all said. dream of losing. A and, Grammy. And by the way, the, the first time I heard that before I saw it and before I saw she was silent for the first day and a half. Her camp was totally silent oh. about it. And then she did post something on social media. But when I first heard it before I saw her post, 
I was thinking, and I didn't see it. I just heard it. I'm like, maybe there was an ear thing. Yeah. She was hearing way too much echo. Oh, there's a bunch of things. Yeah, there's a million things that could go wrong yes. for her that would cause a good singer, which oh. she is. Yeah, you can you can tell that she has she can capability. Yes. It's there. But uh, keep going. Yeah, so I don't know if you... There's more to this. I, I, heard, I heard guesses of like panic attack. Mm. She didn't... She Nerves. seemed off. Nerves might be one, I but heard, then she confessed, and this is the official confession. She sounded drunk. She was drunk. Oh. No way. Yeah. That's what... That was my initial thought. <laughs> she was drunk, and she said, tomorrow I am going into a facility, <gasps> which I don't... Part of me is like, really? this, this is the publicist oh, talking. Oh, we don't need to do you, that. Yeah. We don't need to go there. I mean, if you have a problem, go there. Yeah. But if you just had a bad night because he got drunk, it happens, and I just own it. Oh. And the more you own it and the quicker you just own it, the more it goes away because people know you're human. So apparently she was drunk and that explains it. Oh, so man. I'm glad she wasn't having... Some people are like, anxiety attack maybe? Yeah. Something was off about her. Yeah, yeah. So it definitely... Oh, man. Or it, she was totally normal and the music industry sounds makes you sound spectacular and they just... <laughs> Use there's, your persona. That is a there's that is some a of that potentiality also, that happens. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, what a lot of people don't know she's is she's better you, than Paul Abdul. You can do that live, by the way. They can auto tune you live. Yeah, some churches, <clears throat> some churches may have done that. I don't know which ones. Yeah, but she did. I promise you, she went through a rehearsal early in the day. She probably nailed it, and then. You're at that. It's a party atmosphere. All she the free nailed stuff. it before, and then she got hammered later. <laughs> yes. Hammer, nail. Two. I'd love to see a clip of her not drunk singing. Yeah. Well, she's got some <laughs> nominees out there, so I'm assuming we could find her on You're Spotify. You're the producer, Matt. Let's also, also, you find Matt, those videos. I wasn't given that privilege, Jeff. You're talking. on the wrong podcast, Matt. We only like to focus on the negative. Yeah. So. Well, thanks for bringing that up there. That's great. No, um, I just thought, thought, you know, to honor the... the the tragic events that could have been way worse that took place. Um, you know, why not just hat tip America with a drunk national anthem? Oh man. What sucks is the internet is forever and that will follow her around. You know, that's, that's a bummer. And if I'm being charitable, like, Hey, who, who's surrounding her that, that could possibly like help out maybe. And say, hey, me, let's. I'm gonna go and grab that bottle for a little while because you got the national anthem coming up, and there's literally gonna be dozens of people watching the home run derby. Dozens. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. It, would you guys imagine that your voice would be that bad if you were drunk? Yeah, my voice isn't. She was. Great she now. had all the words. Might be that bad, not drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a change from wherever you're at, but. I just, no, she just that was a big, she lacked the I vocal know. dexterity, that and that's probably totally sloshed. And that's, I forgive her. That's where it went. Yeah. And I, I don't, you know, if you need help, get it. And if you don't, you know, it'd be awesome. It. She comes out of rehab and gets a redemption tour and just is crushing the national anthem like Chris Stapleton style. And everybody's like getting chills every time she's doing it. I would love if she did go into a facility, and this is more than just publicity. Public, publicist talk just post something from social media just doing it in the room yeah look guys i can do it yeah i could totally do this yeah trust me and just own it lean into it bring it into the light yeah what she kind of did yeah this is so today it's just pr no it's better than hot publicist like okay we got to tell me you're going to the facility i mean got drunk you know drank a couple drinks for like an hour and now you went out and did a terrible well she's Jeff, a, you're just aware of it now yeah, it's, it's, it's always been always around been. it's always been there okay so initial do you guys have initial before we get into uh what is going to be the definitive christian response but, to the but not with the speed there's so much speed to like fix it F- fix it we're Put still it recording there. jeff uh Are you guys okay hang you on have a minute <laughs> hold on just a second <laughs> Anyway, what were you saying there, Jeff? <laughs> what I was saying is... Just tell me about the story. Well, Matt, can you hear them? I can't hear them. <laughs> anyway. After, after the hawk tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Maybe, it, Z- maybe Zach will go get those beers that are in the freezer. Yeah, my, and you and I can while just, you guys are we doing this? sing. We can just have a little personal <laughs> try. You know, what oh, we should... Yeah. Say, can you sing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 
Whoa, nice shooting, Tex. Gosh. <laughs> Ghostbusters, my favorite movie. Okay, the original... So uh, what, what I thought was interesting, I was work. I was away from my phone all day long. I had no idea what was, what was transpiring. And then we were hanging out. Uh, you were still in Mexico. We were hanging out at, at a friend's house. Producer Matt was there. And you said, oh, yeah, what do you think about... You said something like, what do you think about ha- what happened today? I'm like, I don't know. What, what do you mean? And you're like, you don't know? And then you showed me. I think you showed me the video. And my reaction was, I didn't overreact. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I forget what you said. You said something to the... I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, what was your response to, to my response? It was, a, it was just almost like I'm more shocked that... Both of us were sort of like, well, ye- this is the state of things. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Like 10 years ago, I probably, if the president got shot at, it would be just, oh my God. There would God, be nothing else on the news. What is happening right now? Conversations with everybody. And also like, can you believe we've gotten to this point? Like, what does this mean? Yeah. And now this is just, it feels like an extension of our current hyper-polarized environment to where... I feel bad that I'm not more shocked. Yeah, and I think the the thing that came to mind for me was uh, I, I like I thought I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. That thought went through my mind, and then I also immediately went to remembering Obama walking out for his acceptance, um, and actually feeling scared for him. Oh, the first the first time with yes. his family. Yes. yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I remember feeling scared. And I'm like, I didn't vote for Obama, but I still, I was like, I was worried. I was like, so, I hope, oh my gosh, it feels like something could happen. And I don't want it to happen. First black mm. president. There's yeah. like historical things happening. And, and the world is nuts and people are nuts. And then this actually, now this actually happens. And we're all kind of like, huh. Man, that's crazy, and, and even new and even news sources choose to be super weird about it. You know, uh, what, what were some it of the headlines weird. that came through? The early like, headlines, like Trump Secret Service pulls Trump out after he falls down with loud noise, like versions yeah, of loud, like, no, loud noises, loud popping noises. Uh, Trump hurt. rally has pop, pop, pop at it. Trump had an ear bleed, and so Secret <laughs> Service rushed him off. Now. A lot of those, I, I, I I'm somebody not, hit it with the airsoft gun. Um, a lot of those, I, if it's early and somebody's before you can confirm it was gunshots, and you need to get a headline out, I get some of those headlines I can justify, and a couple of them are just like, what, what are we doing, guys? Come on, a little clowny. This is why people don't trust you. What are you doing? Yeah, I want to trust you. Come on, guy, be trustworthy. I got nothing else. The higher you talk, the less I trust you. Uh, I'm having a really good day. That was. It it does feel weird. Um, nobody f- at work has said anything about it to me at all. There's been no statements within. Mm. Just so you know, like there's been no internal memos within Google that have said anything about this at all. Which, um, I like. I just thought about right now. I'm like, I think it would have been okay to send something like that. As an internal memo, like, hey, we recognize the gravity of the situation. I, f- I could, I don't know if I was actually working at Google at the time when, like, things like Black My- uh, Black Lives Matter movements were happening or those protests were going on and and companies were, like, trying to make statements about these big, big uh, social situations that were occurring. Right, 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 right. But there's been nothing and no one has said anything and that, and, like, as I think about it right now, that feels weird. Right, like, you, when anything has happened, it, especially in my school district, we get we get stuff almost immediately. We've had nothing. Like, I don't... It's quiet. I don't care if you like him or if you want to vote for him, but, like, this is... It's not a good thing. No. No. It's... It, it, if this is where... The state of affairs is... is n- the country's not well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not well. Yeah. So, why don't we just jump into a clip from Steven Crowder. Okay. And just see where this takes us. Uh, He has this... Let's roll it. He has this clip about, you know, who the real enemies are. And Steven Crowder 
we think he's self-professed Christian. I, yeah, he's been that? really clear you, about that. Yeah, yeah, believer. So the angle we're taking is what, what, how do we respond now? How do Christians behave? Like, how do we engage? Yeah, in response to this, and um, is this an appropriate uh, use of language and whatnot? And is so it forth? biblical? Be based on truth. So you know what? Let me be uh, clear here. Let's first start by hopefully outlining who is not your enemy. You're just real quick. Earlier in this video, we're seven minutes in. He appeared to be fighting back tears, talking about the roller coaster of emotions he's been on. I I think it's pretty apparent. Now, if you don't know him, he's got a large, a very large following. Yeah. Uh, mostly on Rumble. I think he's still on YouTube. I don't know if he's officially on YouTube, but there's clips that get put to YouTube. Okay. Um, but very large following political commentator. Everyone knows who Steven Crowder is. Conservative. And I think he loves Trump. Which is why it's not tears. your family members or other members of your community, the community you've chosen and hopefully take an active role in every day. Even those maybe who vote differently from you. Someone believes in higher taxes. They want longer government subsidized maternity leave or maybe some more social safety nets. They're not your enemy. They're wrong. They're not your enemy. Glad to hear that. Hell, I'd even self-identified socialists who are open about their beliefs, their disagreements with you, and who will engage in a form of ideas with you on an honest playing field. They're not your enemy. They're certainly wrong, in my opinion, but they're not your enemy. But the people out there who've been calling President Trump and people like you a Nazi or a white supremacist, they are the enemy. People who label you a fascist for being pro-life, they are the enemy. People who burned down cities and killed, murdered conservative Americans, fellow Americans at rallies, they are your enemy. The people who forced you to shut down your business, ruining your family's livelihood, never to be recovered again over a virus without you even having a say while claiming that they are doing it to save democracy, guess what? They are the enemy. You guys and the people me actively involved thought. in That's shutting okay. down, silencing political speech for protesting said lockdowns. They are the enemy. The political, the, the ruling class who decided that rather than run on an even playing field to try and destroy a man's livelihood, his business, his legacy, and the remainder of President Trump's life. Because before they take his life, they try and take his name. That's what they do. Who's they? The progressive left. The hateful progressive left. All right. That's a good one. Uh, when he puts it all together, when he puts all of those things together, I mean, it's just crazy how sideways the political world has gone, just not in the United States, but across the world, and Trump's the cherry on the top. So let's imagine that we agree with him. Those are your enemies. What are we supposed to do with our enemies? Did you read my cheat sheet, Andy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> did I steal it? Oh, no. No, great minds. Yeah, what is the the... Literally, the Bible says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. Yeah. So how would this fit into... By the way, he didn't say what to do. Yet. Correct. He didn't have any action. So I don't know what happens in the rest of that video. And well, yeah. Maybe that's where he goes. Did you... I don't know if you finished watching it. Does Do you get the sense that that's what he's telling you? I went through almost... <laughs> Almost all of it. And this is just a 20 minute chunk of probably yeah. his hour and sure. whatever podcast. So um, that's the first thing I thought of. It's like, okay, well, how we just stopped it there is the political progressive left. And so he does a good job, like even disagreeing with, he, yeah. he straw mans a little bit, even people that are like this version of whatever. I like how he's like, they're not your enemy. Your community's not your enemy. Yeah. That's so important to remember. 
But when he gets to the political progressive left, what what do people that are super politically partisan and active think when they think that? They're going to think the person that votes differently than you. Yeah. The person that sees things a little bit different. Not necessarily. Some people can do the nuance game and see like, yeah, but the there's an agenda from the elites, but the average lefty person that I see at the grocery store, they're not my enemy. That that's important to separate, and that's what he's trying to. They're probably at Trader Joe's, right? That's the grocery store. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. It used to be Whole Foods, but now it's that's the evil Amazon empire. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah the man took over that one. They're back to Trader Joe's. So I don't know how easy it is for people. the The people that are activated enough, and this kid that shot at Trump, he's not right. No. Whatever's going on with him, that is not an appropriate response to any disagreement. Um, but at the same time, there has been so much vitriolic. Um, yeah, the question that people ask is what leads up to someone doing something like this? Yes. What are the influences in their lives that cause them to come to the point that they think, I need to crawl up on top of a building with a rifle and take a shot at a presidential candidate? Yeah. And that's that's where you see these montage clips of uh, political opposition saying things like calls for violence, claiming uh, Donald Trump needs to be stopped at all costs, um, and and he's Hitler. Well, what he's do you do literally with Hitler. What he- do you do with Hitler? What do you mean when you say stopped at uh, at all costs? Yeah, and that he's a complete threat to um, uh, America and democracy. At some level, do you who who recognizes the the gravity or the responsibility for their words? I, I'm not suggesting that uh, people shouldn't own their own actions, as in the shooter sh- should not be owning his own actions. Clearly, he clearly he's taking responsibility for it, and he's dead. Yeah, but at the same time, the the question. While I can't speak for non-Christians, the question for Christians should be, how are you participating in this type of rhetoric? Are you adding to it in a way that uh, encourages this kind of behavior or discourages this kind of behavior? Uh, Matt, pull up the picture in picture again real quick. So his shirt says, fight like hell. Now, it's one of those things like I know he's, when he says enemy and at the beginning of the video, I want to be very fair. He's like political violence is like, it's never, okay. Ne- it's never okay. It's like, he justifies, you know, the American revolution. And if you think like, yeah, extreme circumstances calling for violence and whatnot that, but he's um, implying that this is not extreme circumstances that would call for violence. Yes. Don't, yeah. don't do violence, but still there is, what do you do with enemies? You want to defeat them just on a general level. Well, you don't want to bow down to them. For sure. And you want you should defeat your enemy. If you have an enemy, the idea is, is win and defeat. And so the fight like hell shirt, and he, for him, it's a very political fight. So I don't look at him. He doesn't wear his faith on his sleeve like Charlie Kirk does. Charlie, Charlie Kirk's another guy that's very politically active. He's going around from church to church. Mm-hmm. Pop. pop popular with some of our families. It's not the same, but he's not he's not far off. I mean, it's not like NBA WNBA. It's not that far off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, you should have gone to me on that one. That was my joke. So now you're fired. Uh, there Good you go. Good try. All right. Congratulations. All right. First you firing. can't fire me twice, can, Andy. Oh, I can fire people as many times as I want. Watch me, Matt. I'm on you like a hawk now. I mean, actually, fight like hell. I ignored the gun that's on this table too, like a hawk so, tour. So the gun on Crowder's table, fight like hell, all that stuff. It's, it is like okay, if you're a political animal and you're a political advocate, I get it. That's a ballpark you play in. What are the meta messages that you're sending? I, I'm not there. If you're gonna play the god card and insinuate, which he's not doing here, and I think he has done versions of it before where like it's not a secret that he's a christian he's to be a christian is that. to be have the appropriate yeah. views and to fight politically the the appropriate way and i'm, and, I'm and, not against political stances either and by the way when he does his like man on the street thing and he has these like very strong disagreements with people mm-hmm. on on charged topics 
he is super respectful and people usually are not other people are not so yeah he, yeah. he does demonstrate it in real life yeah. but but that doesn't take away from what you're alluding to here yeah and so for people like him and i i actually have a tweet that i'll pull up in a in a bit for charlie kirk using the bible to justify trump getting saved which is pretty fun um it's it's i confess I'm not a fan of the go and speak in churches where you're not allowed to tell people how to vote. And so you do a lot of God talk and then you pretend to be, oh, I'm sorry. I just have to mention Trump. It feels like some of these guys, and in a weird way, not in a weird way, this is a little bit weird because some of the political stances with these people, I am more sympathetic to than the other side. But what I don't like is the, we know Trump doesn't come off well to a lot of Christians. So we got to go on these tours to churches and it feels like it's convinced Christians that it's okay. You can have a clean conscience and vote for Trump. And I'm not saying don't vote for Trump. Like I don't have problems with people that vote for Trump or don't vote for Trump. Uh, But when you're going to put the God card behind a candidate, that's where the- It's always dangerous, right? I worry about the idolatry and like God has destined him for this. And therefore you ignore some warning signs potentially. And this happens on the left, like uh, Christians on the left justified Biden and anybody that's not Trump Yeah, based on some things they'll say sometimes Biden and those, and that side of the aisle will say the right things when it comes to helping people. They're more vocal, more vocal about helping the poor, the homeless, all that stuff. But what you know, whether the policies bear fruit is a different conversation. But so Trump. I get people like not like I get a Christian. I don't like Trump, and this guy's saying, "Listen, the Bible talks a lot about the immigrant, the outcast, yeah, who we should help, welcome the immigrants because they will vote for you, <laughs> <laughs> right?" Yes, that's may- maybe a secondary rub. But so I get a Christian being not liking the bombastic nature of Trump and then being attracted to some of the language of the left side of the aisle. But it, then we do a version of it too, where it's like, we want to grasp that ring of power. And that's where my biggest rub is state power. Just imagine Lord of the Rings, the ring of power will corrupt. And if you establish power using that ring, eventually the power is going to swing to the other side. They're going to have the ring. And are you going to enjoy the powers that they now have because of what you did for good? I'm, I'm looking at you, Boromir. Bunch of golems out there, man. Yeah. Bunch of golems. Yeah. Sorry. I, I got a little no, no, more salad but no, it's, stream it's of consciousness. Good. Hey, it's just opinions. You know, I could change them. Let them know in the comment section, people. Uh, I'm wrong. Yeah. Tell them why he's wrong. Good news. Yeah. You don't have to get mad. I'm probably wrong. That's cool. Uh, It seems like, I mean, that's a cyclical thing in terms of power, but the, in terms of responding to this and what he, what Steven Crowder is talking about is simply like they've been up in the ante for several years. Who's they? The Democrats, the liberals really in, and the media and just pushing and pushing and just like Democrats and creating, power. creating as much hate, as much conflict as they possibly can. And then heaving it to the other side and going there, the, they're the problem. It's like, this, this wasn't a problem. This wasn't a problem during the Trump years. And now it's a problem. And, and so the, the fear of, you know, losing that power, th- just they're throwing the kitchen sink in, but the response of us as Christians it's like, um, I mean, okay, someone ch- took a shot at the president. I mean, if it had killed him, um, there might be war on the streets right now. Yeah, that seems like that's a possibility. Right. Which is weird to say out we're, loud. We were so right? close. Like it's inches. And, and I'm, I'm actually refreshed, but so far, you know, whatever this is, four or five days in, there, there no hasn't, reaction. There hasn't been reaction it, from the right or from elements on the right, and I pray that that well, continues to be the case. I th- well, I think 
You mean like a, a response, like a yeah. phys- physical response? Yeah, I'll go after it. There's been maybe, reactions, but not physical yes, response. Yes, like, like, vi- like an actual physical I mean, response. No one's taking shots at Joe Biden. <laughs> no, not worth it. The I mean, the co- the conversation between yeah. a conservative and a liberal, the liberal is off the reservation in terms of emotions. And the conservative is just um, throwing things Perfect, out. Perfect, right? Throwing thing out, pretty much. Throwing things out there and the the liberal just doesn't know how to respond and has no leverage and can't make an argument and they just uh, i don't know i can't even talk to you anymore who are you talking about right now i'm talking about all those conversations that steven crowder has on uh, in his interviews on the street oh yeah well he cherry picks those too it, i talk to people and they're like i can't talk to you and I know. I know things are heated. I, I don't disagree. No, with that. I'm just saying. You said Stephen Crowder. So for me too, just having yeah. conversations with a liberal, they can't have a conversation. They don't know what to do. They just throw what they've been throw in your face. What they've been taught, which is you're racist and you're a white man, and you, uh, I'll never be able to have wealth. And I'd be like, well, you got free speech, and you got you know the freedom to go and create a business and do whatever you want, and. They're like, ah, oh, they don't have capacity or even anything to back up their argument. So they just give up and walk away pissed off at what I have no idea. And I think that has created this undercurrent for what has happened to Donald Trump. And unfortunately, we got four more months before the election, and I don't know where this goes. What's the last time you had a really good uh, conversation or debate with someone who believed very differently than you, and you felt like you walked, you both walked away, holding respect for the other person, uh, and recognizing that maybe they made some points, maybe I made some points, and uh, it wasn't necessarily about did I crush them and win win the argument or vice versa. Can you guys think of the last time you had that happen? Or are you just living in echo chambers? No, with Colin. Yeah? Yeah. With our... He's been on the... Yeah. He's been on. Colin Ferris. Wizard Colin Ferris. Yeah. Yeah, with Colin. We yeah. we definitely have opposing views. Yeah. And it was a good... It's a good conversation. And it always is. And we walk away like, okay, good stuff. I yeah. wish everybody could do this. Do yeah. you feel like when those... When that kind of conversation is happening, that you guys are okay with like, hey, I may not be, I don't need to necessarily convince you. At, at the end, at least I can have like clarity on where you're at and you can have clarity on where I'm at and our goal is not agreement. Yes. And it's more of being heard. Like, yeah, let me hear what you're, what you're, what's your stance. Yeah. And I mean, that's what debate is. And like, okay, I... Actually, debate's about winning and losing. Well... But- but conversation, okay, you're, good you're, faith you're, conversation, you're right. good faith conversations you're are. Right. But at times, you kind of pose a question, yeah. to get like, can you see this? And why? How the hell can and you believe why, that? <laughs> and why do you? But <laughs> there is like that's the moment where you you either like that's scorched earth, and I'm out of this conversation. Yeah. And I can't believe you're even even asking that. How could you think that? Or okay, and they. They, as Zach said, they lean into it and they're yeah. like, okay, let's, uh, let's go there. Producer Matt, um, you four years ago moved from Southern California up to Idaho. That is fact. And did you, uh, did you notice anything just in terms of like the difference of the differences in the types of conversations that you would have with people after moving, moving up there? I, I, I don't know if you found that there were people who are more sympathetic to your, general viewpoint or less sympathetic since when you live down here. But I was curious if there was any, any difference that you noticed in the, in those types of conversations, more conflict, less conflict. I mean, Idaho is definitely a more conservative state. So there's probably, which I identify more on the conservative side. So there, I mean, that was one of the reasons the interests and, in, and in going, going up there for the, the, the um, yeah, the fewest, uh, what is it? The state had the fewest laws and regulations in the the country at the time. America, coming and from California, coming which from California, probably has the, yeah. the yeah. most China, so, right? And whether you like them or not, that's just true. California is way oh, regulated. America, right. Right. Where you can jump off the bridge into the river, 
you know, whether you're going to get hurt or not, they allow it. Yeah. And that threw me for a loop in the beginning. We first floated the river and I'm like, these kids are going to get in trouble jumping off the bridge then you threw those kids for a loop <laughs> yeah. then i went up there and, and matt had me jump off the bridge with yeah. him so freedom um, yeah i mean there were uh more conservative thoughts but again i mean you've got boise state and a, a, a big city for idaho so yeah. there there's all sorts of, of views and opinions and and uh but you know being we're not in the country but outside of the big city yeah to some respect and and it's um you know people that want their space you know they want they want that freedom you know Some there's GD no hoa peace and quiet right right you know those that want an hoa and those that don't want an hoa you know? <laughs> i prefer not to have an hoa i'd like to meet the person who wants an hoa <laughs> could i have a board rule over me and tell me that i'm not allowed to keep my kidnapper van in our uh, driveway <laughs> this is a true story people that's oh, a true geez. story yeah, he, he actually has a kidnapper van. Yes, oh, my wife. My wife drives a kidnapper van for her business, and we're not allowed to keep it. <laughs> we're not allowed to What's talk. About, we're not going to talk about what the business is because <laughs> for her professional business, which happens to bring in a lot of money, <laughs> she has a van with no windows. <laughs> There's no windows in the van, and just trust me, it's for legal purposes. <laughs> She's a landscaper. <laughs> anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is my HOA sucks. Balls. It, it is wild, though. It, it's, it's, I can't park my own vehicle in my neighborhood. This goes into, file it into the, is it Thomas Sowell? There's no solutions, only trade offs kind of a thing. Oh, which is, uh, there's an opposite theory to that, too, like strategy, never negotiate, no compromises. But my point being, that we also live in an association where everything is taken care of out front. Everything is clean. Free association. But everything is the same. It's... Truman Show. It's boring. Yeah. And so you you drive into older neighborhoods where we're at in Mission Viejo, same city, but don't have an association. You'll have immaculate houses that have been done up, good yards next to houses that that person is just checked out to where it's like, in a weird way... I like that more because it's human and it's it's like, yeah, you need guardrails, but I'm going to start parking my car on your lawn all when I come same. over and visit. <laughs> I'm just going to park it right up there. Oh, I'm not in that part of Mission Viejo. You, you would get towed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a donut on your lawn. But um, I don't know if you're. It would not. Car would know, my car would not. Lawn. My Let car me, would not be able to make it up the curb. There's a million things we could say and then. And we're not going to cover all the bases, but let me go to the next clip. Okay. This is from a podcast called Church Dropout, and they're talking about the Christian response. Where'd you find these guys? To, on YouTube. You guys didn't answer the que Andy's oh, what's question, the question about if oh. you had a conversation with somebody who had opposing views, and it was um, you left it like, okay, it was good. Well, with Matt, Matt and I will talk some politics, mostly spiritual stuff, Matt. Wait, this, this Matt? Yeah, this Matt. Producer Matt. Can you confirm? Like, We'll, we'll talk about... Um, theology and stuff. Matt's gonna get fired for bumping. Matt, did you bump your mic? He's he's putting that glass down hard on the desk. Bro, take it easy. But that's all right. I'm already fired. Matt's theology is different than mine. I can refire you. And I think my theology is different than most. And but Matt and I can talk about prayer and worship in a way that I know he thinks about prayer differently than yeah. me. In a way that a lot of Christians that say they want to hear different angles. You can tell when you start touching on sacred cows, they're like. Matt, get rid of that picture in picture. You're fired. Oh, yeah. He started talking about other things, Matt. We'll, we'll get God. there. That's fine. Jeez. But a lot. <laughs> Rookie. A lo fired. But seriously, What's a lot this of. What's button do over here? A lot of Christians. <laughs> no, that. Don't touch it. That actually drops the. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> A lot of Christians say they like to talk about theology and stuff, but when you start to talk about universalism or the idea that Whoa. the, the Bible is not perfect, there is like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Like, because the danger of hellfire is always looming, but not so with Matt. I mean, Matt, for you. Matt knows I might be going to hell, but he's fine with it. And yeah. so it's very cordial and we can have good faith conversations, but I'm being serious. It actually happens. Uh, Matt, do you do this with Zach too? Do you go... Bye, Zach. Hope he 
And it might like it might be the last. We'll get to watch What's you it? on TV in hell. Oh. Oh. oh, turn to channel seven. Is that what you do with me? <laughs> Bye, Zach. You said, do you do that too? Yeah, <laughs> like there's more than one person who does this. Jeff, are you talking about that animated thing where my kids have been showing me? They talk in that that language you're talking in. Mm. No. Oh my no, gosh, no, no, no. Uh, YouTuber commenters, please let us know what the is going on. <laughs> No, we don't know, and, the, okay. and they, they wouldn't know either. Also, uh, also, we like we. I had some good political talk uh, talks with Matt's friends uh, at a recent little getaway where people dis- disagreed on politics, but it was fine. That's fun when that happens. Perfectly it's fine. Nice. It's refreshing. Oh, it's like a cool glass of whiskey. Because the reality is, Jeff, you mentioned a lot of things the left accentuates for the purposes of maintaining their power, and I don't disagree with that at all. But for some of my my family, they fall victim to the same thing coming from the right, which is convincing them that the world will end. You're not going to survive the Biden presidency. You won't survive another four years. And I remember every every president has been the Antichrist. Every president has been there. For your parents. We're, we're going to yep. go communist. We're uh, going to go socialist. The, cl- the pearl clutching, I'm done with. Like... Just enough of the pearl clutching. But I just want to point out, it happens from both directions, and maybe one party is guilty of it more, but ultimately, no, it will it's scaring happen. the shit out of people so they vote the way you want to. And that's the part that I'm like, hold on. That's going to cause us to hate people. That's going to cause disturbed individuals fighting God knows what demons, figurative or literal, that this shooter did, um, to make those steps. Which is an interesting to, idea. To fix things politically. To literal demons. And um, so let's let's play this clip. I so I I actually Andy, I know you've mentioned your your Muslim friend at work yeah. that you've had a really good conversation. Dude, so I don't want to steamroll over that. I uh shout out to Adam. I love our conversations. He's uh it, it's refreshing. A good friend of mine at work is Muslim, and he and I have like the most open conversations and we get to talk about uh where our beliefs differ, where they have overlap, like the Venn diagram of our beliefs as well. Open questions are totally welcome. Uh, I don't feel uncomfortable saying like, hey, tell me about this thing. Do you believe in this thing? And what's interesting is I think before engaging with him, I thought that um, like uh, Muslim faith was just like monochromatic. Like there was no differing. Everyone believes everything all the way. And what's been interesting is to to learn from him, like, no, that's not the case. Which is, I feel dumb, the like <laughs> coming to that realization. But whatever, dumb or not, like at least I'm I'm changing the way that I'm thinking about things and recognizing that people have more diversity in their thought and their belief systems. Uh, the conversation is great. We're not trying to change each other's minds. And the opportunity for us to be able to share and find areas of agreement that is so refreshing. And it is an opportunity to like say, oh, you believe this thing. Tell me more about why you believe that thing. Yeah. That's cool. Let me tell you about this thing that I believe. Let me tell you about why I believe this thing here. And at no point does either one of us go, well, you're full of shit. And I'm mad at you for you for believing that thing. Yeah. And... My goal is not, well, I hope at the end of this I can go, yeah, I, I'm becoming more Muslim. That's not my goal. And I don't think his goal is, <laughs> am I becoming more Christian at the end of this discussion? But what happens if you have two people that are demonstrating like open-handed sharing of their belief systems and their and, and their worldviews, and we get to know each other a little bit more and have a little bit more charity towards each other, and, which is ultimately underpinned by love. Is that not a good thing? That's a good thing. And you're probably also corporate America. Nobody wants to rock the boat in corporate America. Don't shit on his point, Jeff. <laughs> Dude, this is <laughs> the mo- these are the most spiritual is- conversations I've ever had in my corporate career by far. Like there's no sec the second place is so far away. But it's all a nice conversation. It's there is I mean there's no firing back, right? It's rich. It's a good conversation. It's it's, it, it's really deep and rich. It's talking about things that really genuinely matter and that have like it like the question of is there spiritual darkness in the work that we're doing? 
That's a deep question at, yeah. in corporate America. Guess what, people? The answer is yes. <laughs> at Google, yes, there is. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. So quick donate to our Patreon so that we can support Andy after he gets fired. Yeah. <laughs> right. Quit from the darkness. Okay. Okay. So anyway, okay. I'll finish that. You got, a, you got something you want to share with us? Yep. Church Dropout Podcast. Let's see what they have to say about, about the Christian response to the attempt on Trump's. All right. We're going to actually play it this time. Live. Get it, producer Matt. Yep. You got it. Just right. crazy. It is. It's yeah. very crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I think the. F- what do you guys think about that? I'm just kidding. That, <laughs> that guy, <I> their, <laughs> mics, crazy. their mics are great. They, got, like the, they got that Jeff Pearson voice. Come on down SM7. here. SM7. Is it just prayers? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, for for him, for his family. Mm-hmm. Who are they talking know, about? For Trump, the, it, the know, shooter, the, and the fam- praying for the shooter's family. person, I don't know. Trump's family. Or something. Uh-huh. Their praying. Their family, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, just. It's, it's just a, a sad situation, yep. you know, um, mm-hmm. um, and it sh- and as Christians, it shouldn't matter you which way it? we go, yep. which right. way we want. The, uh, the person who is doing the shooting, like pray for them, I that is a very non-conforming way to think in the world. Yeah. And, and it's such a amazing thing. It's what actually draws people to Christ and to people who are following. It's like, wait, you're not something's different. Yeah, they're yes, very different. So the idea that you could be praying for someone who tried to take out somebody else is, I mean, it's a it's a Christ like thing. I th- so here's what I'm reacting to is that maybe and and I don't want to judge her too harshly. Look, if anyone of gets judged by the <laughs> the things they say when someone presses record then we'd all be screwed because phones are especially everywhere. i don't know when they start this could have been like right after where it's like sure we don't we haven't like particularized our thoughts yet yeah i guess the point that i'm trying to make is a like um you get sad when you see uh some strange dog on the side of the road that got hit right like you get sad. This is, this feels like this has more gravity than it's just sad. It's just a sad event. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I, it's I, deeper than that. I see what you're saying. It also might, for the broader point of this conversation, it might be a little pick and nits. Oh, yeah. I let her talk for four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. But, but just the idea of prayer, the, the praying. So, Jeff, you had a couple thoughts on the prayer. I would, I, you know what would blow my mind and I think would be it would be politically good for Trump and also it would be Christianly good if he went and met with the parents yeah. of the kid that tried to kill him. Yeah. And all of branched it type of thing. I think that would pay so many dividends. It would just I think it would do a lot to heal some of the hurt that people that love Trump hardly and i mean not hardly i mean bigly it, it <laughs> continue <laughs> keep going it would help those people like okay our guy is what kind of, yeah what kind of example does that set now all of a sudden if people who had in their hearts retribution yeah see an example of someone who comes in and says i'm going to i'm going to replace your idea of retribution with reconciliation yeah now all of a sudden it's like the autumn, it, it it diffuses, it throws water on the fire, right? It stamps out those feelings of, of vitriol and the, and revenge. And instead it is, uh, hey, you can recognize, I'll use her words, there is sadness in, in the tragedy of what has happened. And the tragedy doesn't, the tragedy is, is manifest in lots of different areas and lots of different people. Yeah. It happened in one event, but it the the arrows of that tragedy point in so many different directions. Yeah, I think it would go yeah, I agree. It would go in a long way a long way towards saying like this sucks. It's a beautiful picture of the way reality is and the, the way God through Christ, through Jesus meets us is like this father forgive them they don't know what they're doing 
also, my God, have you forsake? Why have you forsaken me? This real human, the real human drama is at play. There's not a like. It's not always good and evil and the right and wrong. It's often human and dirty and complicated. And him leaning into that and yeah. say, "Yes, this. It's not okay what he tried to do, but I, I forgive him and can I humanize." Can we humanize each other kind of a thing? No, oh, because the family, I mean, if they were just unknowing. Unless they supplied the bullets and the <laughs> gun and, on purpose, you know, but, that's a different situation. But if not, and they find out, you know, n- not only did our son take a shot, he also got killed. Um, you know, it's like, what 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 happened to our boy? And And Donald Trump shows up at your doorstep and says, I'd like to have a conversation. I mean, first of all, you're already feel probably ostracized from your community and friends are like distancing themselves drastically immediately. And then Donald Trump shows up that it actually could it change could the you, world for them. Could you imagine if that happened and it wasn't filmed? Can you imagine if they figured out how to like, hey, we're going to have a private meeting and it just came out later. Hey, he actually went and met with those parents. And they talked about it, and they had they they sat down, and and there was some reconciliation that occurred. You know, you said you'd mentioned something about it being human. I almost think that this is this is it isn't human. It isn't human because it isn't our like our core nature to to react that way, right? Our core nature is to like typically to, to like raise the fist, especially if it is to this degree, someone tried to kill you. It's not just that they cut you off in traffic. It's not just that they came by when you were parked in the wrong spot and got mad at you. Yeah. It's, it's more than that. And, and so that is like, it becomes a supernatural act in some ways, I think to, to respond in this manner. Or, I'm not disagreeing with you. Or is is the Christ way the the most? Let me human? shit that's, on your point. That's the, that's the human way. <laughs> it's the human. It is the Christ, the God Man, the idea of God and human flesh, perfect representation of God the Father in human form, according to Hebrews. And he just he shows us what it means to be the human. And so, not disagreeing with you because I I think what you're saying is I correct. I don't know. I think it's more. I think it is being called to be more than human. It is the standard that is above what humanity has is is really capable of. But it doesn't mean that we don't strive for it. Right. It's striving towards divinity. No, I agree. And I think. Di- Sorry, di- that will could, could be sliced out and cut out and met. no. I, I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. I'm not. Exp- I'm not trying to. Suppose that we are tiny gods. That's not what I'm trying to. No, the idea that we, we might are be. Here. The, I mean, the, the idea of, of tiny god being filled with the spirit. And My good friend, taking you know, just taking that of what has happened, and then it, it, putting yourself in you know Donald Trump's shoes or or the family who you know lost a, a husband and a father and son. Um, right, and then to to say uh, I forgive you, that that takes a lot, but it shifts so much. And but to be in that, it feels to, like losing. If you're if you're Donald Trump doing that, it feels like losing at some point. I'm sure I can admit, I can put myself in those sh- because it means that I have to lose those emotions and those feelings of being right and like being justified in my anger. Donald Trump. Yeah. Or whoever's right. Whoever, if it's Donald Trump, or, if Donald Trump goes and does that, it is I have yeah. to sacrifice my feelings of being of righteous anger in this moment for most people. And then it's not it's not a stretch to say Donald Trump has a a big ego. He likes winning. He's a he's a powerful dude that has a strong ego, and so it would say so much. It would help so much if he did that, and maybe. Getting clipped like that, there's two ways somebody like Trump could take that. There could be the humbling way where it's like, oh shit, I almost died. 
And there could also be the, oh, I'm, I'm extra justified because God has me for this moment. He protected me, which I've got tweets that I was going to share. We're, we're probably running out of time of Christians doing a version of like God's guardian angels protected him because he's the man for the job right now. I get the, the appeal to that, but it, it's also like that raises more questions about how God interacts in the world. Why didn't he stop the, what was not solving? What's the, Oh, uh, how about a shoot, couple of shootings? Don't even worry about that. Yeah. How, so, so he let the person behind him die. Yeah. Thank you. That's even better. Yeah. That's better. Look at God acting in the world. The fire captain or Save, chief or firefighter that Save dove Donald. on his family yeah. after the gunshots ha- got gunshots happened. Apparently, I don't know if, I, if for some reason I think he got shot in the head. But regardless, yeah. he dove on his family and died. Yeah. So God did that too. That's the logic, and maybe this is me trying to put a box around God. I can. I. I'm willing to humble myself, but having lost a kid and praying so hard to go to like not experience that. Yeah. And then it happens. That's the only logic I can go to. When somebody said, I, I've seen so many memes where a guardian angels behind Trump redirecting the bullet, a fraction of an inch. Have you seen those memes? Oh really? Yeah. It's just like graphics done up where uh-huh. guardian angels protecting Trump from being killed. And so, yeah, maybe that bullet didn't hit that guy, but you might as well, for the logic of it, oh, the guardian angel decided that guy should die too. And that guy has a family and young kids and kids growing up without a father is, is terrible. Great shot, guardian angel. Yeah, so I cannot help, and feel free to push back in the comments, I cannot help but go to that logic. So I do not hold a version of reality that includes God micromanaging like that. I am very sympathetic to the the cheesy wedding verses in in Corinthians from Wedding Crashers. Where it's like love is patient, love is kind. And That's where that verse came from, actually. Wedding <laughs> Crashers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's describing love, and it's using agape. And God is also described as being agape, other parts of the Bible, and that is very powerful to me. Love does not control. That's that type of thing that is really scary because we want God to be in control. Our, yeah. ch- our church mentioned this assassination attempt and I think it was beautiful and I'm glad they did. And it was all about, we need to shift. We need to pay attention to, we need to be peacemakers. How yeah. do we respond to this as Christian peacemakers, which is beautiful. But some of the verbiage was God is still in control. And I love the person that, that said that no diss on that i'm just not there right now it's it opens questions yeah when someone says that if if god is still in control yeah like so he wasn't at that point and now he is yeah the the and there's probably really great theologians who would go oh you're stupid andy let me explain to you why how this thing works and things about God allowing evil to happen in the world for contrast. But there's also a lot of theologians that would say, Andy, you're right, but I could say it a lot better than your stupid ass. So Yeah, thank goodness. I, that Those polars exist, and I think it's beautiful. That, that conversation is beautiful, but yeah. Anyway. Do you guys want to watch some more clips, or do we want to dive into some of the comments? Do we have another clip? We do. It was more from Church Dropout. Um but if we felt it, don't worry about the time, but do you feel like we've uh, kind of closed this topic out? Let me start it. Okay. And you stop me. We can abort at any time. Okay. And just if, if you don't think it's adding. I think to be honest with you, I think as Christians, you know, we need to respond. I love uh, his voice. This might sound cliche, but we need to respond with the gospel. Mm-hmm. But I think we could say that and not really be clear on what's meant by that. How mm-hmm. do we respond with gospel intent? And I think, the way we respond with gospel intent is to do what the scripture tells us to do and to be peacemakers. There should never be a time where we feel like uh, the, the, the way to achieve the ultimate outcome is violence. Mm. And we have to, you know uh, you know, again, be careful with joining ourselves with ideas that end in result uh, in 
in this way. Mm -hmm. You know, we're called to be peacemakers. Right. Uh, we're called to be individuals who bring about reconciliation through mm -hmm. a very specific message. And I think we need to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that would be plainly to do what he did, right? In situations where we lay our, we lay our lives down uh, for those whom we love and even those whom we consider to be enemies. Yeah. So we're peacemakers. Mm -hmm. We bring reconciliation. And That's really good. And it, it feels like losing. Yeah. So sometimes that feels like losing. And right now, everyone's geared up to win in what, however many days. And a lot of them are using faith to justify it. You know, it's funny. The thought that came to mind is like the feeling that you get when you receive a gift versus giving a gift. And I think I, I probably have more times in my, my life that I think about receiving a gift or, or a uh, purchase or getting something that I want versus the other way around. But as, as you get older, you recognize how much, how, like how deep that joy is of giving the gift and seeing someone receive that, that thing. Um, and by its very nature, like giving the gift costs you something. Right. Mm -hmm. And, right. and the, the joy that you receive is the joy that they receive. Right. And so there's something that I, I, I just struck me as he was describing that. And I would love to actually, I would love to reach out to that, the, uh, them and see if they'd want to join us and have a conversation. Cause um, I just want to hear his lovely dulcet. He has, he has a great voice. That radio voice. Now I think there was there was actually studies done on what it like what goes on in your brain yeah. when you give a a gift to someone, and it was much greater and from a different part of the brain right. than when you receive. And when you receive it, it's like it was here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah. But when you gave it, it was like there was something that stayed with you. And especially in your memory bank, <clears throat> especially if you put effort into making, if you bought it, that was one thing that was kind of on a different scale. Yeah. If you like created something or put effort into it and gave a, a present to someone, it, I mean, it, it was huge within your own brain of how impactful that was. So, yeah. Like, so going and asking or saying, Hey, I want to forgive you. Like you're giving something to like if Donald Trump or this family that, you know, the firefighter died. I mean that that would be a, it'd be a huge, huge impact for. I mean, you say like, oh, he's losing, but it's really not. You're not losing here. You're you're actually gaining something great. And you're giving you're giving your hardest, hardcorest followers permission to be like, oh, he did that, right? Okay, maybe I can dial back my rhetoric right. a little bit, right. or maybe right. see see what's going on under the hood. A little more. Mm. Um, so listener feedback, let's get to that for okay. a few minutes. But real quick, do the picture in picture. There's this tweet from Brian Zond. Uh, he's a pastor in St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. Um, and yeah, it doesn't come through that great, but that's fine. The only power the early Christians desired or needed was the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to be faithful witness or martyrs of Jesus. The idea that they should covet the kind of power held by the Caesars would have struck them as not only ridiculous, but a, but as betrayal. And um, I think I think that's a good reminder for Christians. The president, in some ways, has more power than any Caesar has had. And what is your mission as the Christian? Is it to change? Culture. I mean, if you think that the president is not a puppet of some other giant corporation. Right. But Different. Anyway, so We're yeah, spin off continue. I guess. I agree. I, I'm with you, Andy. Let's go, cool, man. Just but just when you're, some, when you're a Christian, what is your mission as a Christian? It's not to win political influence and power, to enact change through the potential of violence, because that's what happens when you take control of the state. You have a monopoly on force. Is that how Jesus walked? I, I find, I know of no evidence not. that Jesus tried to overthrow Rome. In fact, he told his disciples to bring a sword and you can make an argument that he brought, told them to bring a sword and then, so that he could disarm them to show that, no, this is not the way. So it's not, the, it's not an impulse. It's not, um, I'm not saying don't vote, 
or don't have political opinions, but how you hold those and how you vote as a Christian, uh, it should really, the way Jesus operated under the boot of Rome should have influence on your life today. So anyways, let's get to some uh, feedback. Okay, we've got lots of feedback. We've been we did uh, an episode on the Robert Moore stuff. I think we did. We did a uh, follow up on that one as well. There were just a couple of sub episodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sub clips that we did of that on the and YouTube channel. On so. the YouTube channel, and if you're on Spotify, Apple, or just the audio only podcast, you're missing out. There's other stuff that you could be getting. Actually, you're not really missing out. You're getting all of it, except for these bits and pieces which are the commentary that's juicy happening. juices okay if, by the way what you're you're holding this I, ipad here and yeah it's got our podcast from and it's got the verbal like whatever subtitles <laughs> i know it's just coincidence it's just ridiculous okay do you want to let anybody else in on this it says Jeff? It, the whatever we were talking about at that moment somebody i think it was you said he made her comfortable <laughs> that's all it says <laughs> the subtitle yes yeah yeah, gotcha. yeah producer matt can you go to this camera real quick here i don't know if it shows up the uh, no it's not gonna show up mm. all right let me read to you from desiree mansfield 1644 those of you who are without sin cast the first stone robert morris has repented and confessed his sin and god has forgiven him but not people like you, double, <laughs> triple exclamation mark. By the way, there's a comma before the cr- triple exclamation mark. This happened some 30 years ago, four exclamation marks. Check your own life first before throwing stones at others, three exclamation marks. All right, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Uh, by the way, Laura A. Stacy, Lori A. Story, sorry, said, thank you so much for your post in response, as I've had basically the same questions also. Um, first of all, no questions in her statement. There were no questions there. Hmm. And uh, Mary Nordskog, 2164, said, I agree. She didn't get healed on the inside. She has carnal resentment, trying to get even by destroying him. And I am Good I am pronouncing how it is written, destroying. <laughs> uh, okay. So apparently everyone's drunk when they're typing these. So, uh, guys... Was it wrong of us to react negatively to a pastor who hid the the detailed truth about his indiscretion and sin and then served for another 30 years and uh, ruined a 12-year-old girl's life? If it's wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me give you a little... I still go back to the fact that this was all hidden for... People buried it, never talked about it, and we're like, let's move on. Yeah. So, forgive, like... I, I You can be forgiven, but you don't get to get restored, I don't doubt restored, that, restored into that position. I don't uh, doubt that Robert yeah, is restored, forgiven. Restored into that position yeah. is ridiculous. That's the part that we're reacting but to. But it goes to one of, the, one of the shorts and part of the shorter clips that I made on the YouTube channel is her talking about she didn't want to rock the boat. She didn't right. want to right. besmirch the name of Christ. She didn't want to hurt the church. She was all 12 that years old. What and, are you going to do at 12? No, I know. But even at, into adulthood, she didn't want to do all that stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's very apparent that these particular commenters are very concerned with protecting the brand as opposed to well listen guys the person Keith Sanders 5603 says Paul was a religious leader of the day and murdered Christians was he disqualified for ministry five question marks well we liked Paul so. guess what uh Keith there's a key uh piece of the information that you've decided to leave out here which was when Paul was murdering Christians Paul was not a Christian here here so how should that factor into the equation? Keith Sanders, 5603. But a weird rub. He was a militant uh, Jew. Oh, Pharisee. I think he was in the Pharisaic realm. Yeah. Um, and militantly so. And then when he had his experience, 
he didn't stop becoming Jewish. He just believed in this, in the God man of Jesus. So I don't know, just a little color to the situation. He didn't become a Christian and stop being Jewish. But anyways, keep going. Uh, let's see. God man. I like it, Zach. I don't know how to pronounce this, but I'm going to do my best. Cobus Prince Lou. Did I do that right? Are you asking if I can see that? I don't know, man. It's so <laughs> tiny. If you were Cobus Co- Prince Lou said King David committed a worse crime by sleeping with another man's wife and then arranging for his murder. Yep. That was also a moral failure on David's part. Surely this was something that David wanted forgiven and forgotten after being called out by the prophet. There's no hint that he disclosed his moral fa- failure publicly as it surely was shameful. Does this not imply that he had not truly repented? The same goes The same goes with Morris. Same thing. His, yeah, I just don't want those people in power. His crime was shameful. Did he repeat re- did he repent? I think he did. I guess that's all. We're all in that same boat, Cobus Prince Lou. He didn't repent until Nathan hammered him. The prophet Nathan called him out. Yeah. David, that is. So there is that. What if Nathan, what if there wasn't a prophet to call him out? Would he have kept on going on willy nilly? So listen to this. Uh, I watched several of his sermons and his theology was sound. So he did a. Uh, cherry picking of some sermons and believes that his theology is sound, especially regard with regard to sexual sin. So I, I don't disagree that it's possible he said some truthful, truthful things in his sermons. Do as I say, not as I do. And and maybe he is restored, or maybe he is. I, well, I know he's forgiven. But just, also, he doesn't need to be in a position of power. Just the fact that he did not disclose Same with King David. Yeah. Oh. Whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, Matt. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros. Bible Series 242 <laughs> and one half. <laughs> Hold what on, you, buddy. What do you want Matt to do? I think you. Andy's fired. Fired. I might be. This could be. Our it's friends okay. are all here. They won't Woo! be able to hear it. Bro. Are you serious? Yeah, they won't hear it. I'll cut it out afterwards. So oh, we just look like I a sound bunch like of a drunk singer. Yeah, yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so great. This is this is the my demons. favorite episode. You know what happens is we let a ginger into the room, and this is what happens. Yep, producer this, Matt, this is your fault. Okay, let me like get the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> let me finish this one. Just okay. the fact that he did not disclose everything about his promiscuous past—that's not spelled right. Does this mean he had not repented? He obviously also feels ashamed about his past. Cut him so slack. Guys, I cut. I cut, cut so slack. Okay. Cut so slack. Listen, commenters, I love. I love that you are commenting. I love that so much. But just take a second and double check your comment for grammar and typos before you hit enter. I but got it, I got two more. Okay. Do we want to respond to that, by the way? Oh, probably. I don't know. Go ahead. Well, what I don't like is the equivocation, first of all. Well, King David was a murderer, so how bad could this be? It's just a little bit of kitty diddling. That's all, you guys. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. That's all. And it's easy to say when it's not your daughter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, also, maybe King David should have stepped down. Like, How about that one? We, we don't want people in positions of power yeah. that will do those sorts of things. So, and And by the way, repentance without being forthright, is that truly repentance? Because... One of it's been argued that one of the strongest aspects of Christianity and Christian culture is uh, confession to one another, and and bringing your sin of the darkness out into the light. One could make the argument that Robert Morris violated that pillar of Christianity and has never actually done that. Yeah. Yep. It's he, not that he's not forgiven. I got a yep. You should probably go. Sit, I got a nod. Sit down with her and apologize that could be amazing yep it's not good it's n- we're not saying he can't be forgiven he's not forgiven no it's not that's that. not what we're saying it's just jesus forgives you don't cover stuff up and or if you don't put things in light partially oh it was a young lady 12 year girl i know we already talked about this yeah um okay you got some 
Oh, we, by the way, I should, I should, can I just answer give yeah. the last one? It's, it's a two parter. It's Rita Schultz, 6859. She was on fire. First one. No such thing as walking in purity. You're Andy, an elder. Shocking. You're kidding, right? Question mark. Now, before you put that into Google Translate, <laughs> um, what is stream of thought? We, we mentioned, I think, I think she's saying it, Andy. She can't believe you're an elder, that you're on a board of a church. You're Andy, an elder. Am I walking? I'm not walking in purity. Is that what she's saying? Uh, maybe it's impossible to walk in purity. So the idea of pe- people being perfect, which there's never no said. such thing as walking in purity. Yeah. So and I'm a sh- and it's shocking that I'm an elder. You're not wrong, <laughs> by the way. And followed up by maybe the best ever comment. The bros are back. <laughs> same, same, same person. Co- same person. <laughs> the bros <laughs> are back. What? Thank you, Rita. Oh my God. Schultz, six eight five nine. Yeah, we are. <laughs> All right. Well, I got Janie Kinzer um, commenting on the Robert Morris. This video is a failure. And that's, <laughs> that's it. Say this more. video is a failure. Yep. Say more. And then uh, D&G Mama commented, I appreciate men being willing to talk boldly about this topic and not turn their head and try to Christian explain something that is clearly wrong. Yeah. Thank you. We must do better for our children. Yeah, I don't like the way that you read that, but I do like what they said. <laughs> <laughs> Reading was never my strong suit. But that's that's good. And there was another Nor was speaking. Did you have that one that I clipped and sent to you? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will you pull that out because what I think is interesting is the comment section ha- is is polarized. Yes, there very much those, so. There are those that feel, for some reason, that they need to step in and defend Robert Morris and defend his position. And I'm not sure w- what that's what's driving that or motivating that. Maybe it is a fear that if you take down someone who's in a position of Christian leadership and power, that it somehow diminishes Christianity, when in reality... It may do the exact opposite. It may bolster that to say we are we are it, it, Christian Christianity and Christian culture is healthy because we can recognize when there's wrongdoing and do the right thing at that point True. in time. So you've got uh, that's one camp. The other camp, and and by the way, there's some like shit talking on the victim, which part of me is like, there's a lot of question. Oh, really? Why is she doing this now? I don't know if I believe her. And is there like? <clears throat> What is she? Have he to, already stepped what down a have, while ago for doing inappropriate things. So it's not like yes, it's alleged, but I know. He okay. sort of confessed. See to if it. you can pull up that one. Which one? The, the one with uh, the person who's. Uh, it's a two parter. I um I screenshotted two of them. You can. S- I know. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Just flip right to left to see. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Here it is. It's from Fit Runner 1317. Glad that you are um exercising. The truth of the matter is, quote unquote, walking in purity doesn't make. Uh, anyone pure? That wasn't it. <laughs> Doggone it. We're, Sorry. Here we, right. go. Here we go. Uh, uh, Joanne Summerfield, 8419. Robert Morris has stated from the pulpit over the years his great sorrow over his sins of the past. The work he has done in these many years has been the catalyst and helped countless people. As a survivor of abuse, I in no way say what he did was right, but we cannot say a person being uh, uh, cannot be in leadership because of their past. Most of the great men of the Bible also committed heavy sins, and yet God used them mightily. There is something about this woman's story that doesn't ring true. Sorry, this is on the other side. So, that doesn't ring true. It seems there's error and fault with both parties here. Why did she allow herself to continue to be alone with him during those years? She Good had family memories there. So this is the one that I was like, She's 12! Bitch, what are you talking about? Oh my God. Why would your 12-year-old daughter allow herself to be there with him? Why would she do that? When, in fact, if you listen and if you pay attention, she said specifically, he didn't make me feel bad. That's what a manipulator does. That's what an abuser does. And I look at this and I'm like, you're trying to diminish the evil that happened to her. And it, it riles me up so much. It makes me... 
I don't want to say it makes me more mad at this person than it does what he did. It can't, but it, it makes me mad. And I'll just put it that way. And also what's horrifying to me is that more people be upset that you said bitch before and I said fuck that. As so, opposed to like blaming the victim in that way. One of the things that this person says is we cannot say that a person cannot be in leadership because of their past. And I say bullshit. Yeah. Guess what? You absolutely can and you should. And we do it all the time. We do it all the time. So I would ask you, use common sense in this in this equation and go, you have someone who is a pedophile in their past. Will you allow them to be a part of your children's ministry? No. And that was the point Cindy made is like, if he won't pass the children's ministry test, why is he speaking from the pulpit? And why are you fighting for a dickwad to be in leadership? Why why do you need to try to defend this? Are there not enough other people who can step into this position and do right. this thing? Yeah, there's plenty. How weak? Like at some point, I'm like, how weak is your faith that you think this is the only person who could be di- possible there's to do this? There's plenty of narcissistic sociopaths that <laughs> would, would love, love to be a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I think people just get lost in the idea that... You're against him. How can you not forgive and, and allow him to go on with his life? He can't go on with forgiven. His, he can go on with his life. He is forgiven. Yeah. He's he's that's it's find a different job. Yes. Okay. Go be a gas station attendant. I should have read Fit Runner 1317. I'm gonna finish it with this one and then we can come off of these, but I, I do feel a little uh, emotionally triggered by this. Oh. And it's going against it's going against the stoicism that I've been trying to study and take on in my own life. Oh. The truth of the matter is walking in purity doesn't make one pure. Only the blood of Jesus does. I'm doing a translation for her because she said the bloke of Jesus. Maybe she's from the UK. Or I don't maybe know. the yoke. Yoke is another word that would work there. That's biblical. Uh, okay. He and, and the bloke he. of Jesus. Imagine Jesus has a best friend. This is my best Brit- bloke. And he's British. He's British. He's like, That's what I was thinking. He's like, hey, hey, this man's the way. I can't do an accent. Fuck. I'm this not- guy. <laughs> the way, the truth, and life. I'm Jesus' friend. I will make you pure. You should listen <laughs> to me. It's, it's going to happen. Trust me. Purity, purity <laughs> comes from me. I'm Jesus' bloke. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> knowing this truth causes us to want to walk and live out this truth, but it's not stopping sinning or stopping a sinful behavior that makes us pure. I actually like that. It's not the lack of sin that makes us pure. That It's more than that, right? Okay, I don't believe Robert Morris repented because his actions and words don't line up. He's a wolf. Oh. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's yes. turned it back on Cindy shame blaming and he's never owned up to his actions and his wrongs and he's trying to justify his actions by saying i walked in purity after same commenter a uh, different commenter oh after what he never oh sorry this whole thing that i'm giving right now is one he never admitted his wrong that's a classic narcissist and the elders did everything to protect him to protect their lives their income and or, and puffed up his status this is not the church of jesus and Robert Morris has not repented, nor the elders. Um, I thought I had the follow-up to that. But that's good enough. So the reason I like this is because it demonstrates the chasm between the way that our our viewers are seeing this same exact situation. This They both are viewing the same mm-hmm. video and coming at it from completely different angles now whether or not they're doing their own research which apparently you should not do uh is up (laughs) is 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 up for debate but um i tend to err closer to fit runner 1317's comments of this seems like bullshit and and i don't believe that just because uh someone uh, that we shouldn't ignore someone's past especially when it comes to to positions of leadership I firmly believe, and I think that that is, it is theologically, doctrinally accurate. It's biblical, like you would like to say, Zach. That those I, I actually never wanted to those say that. in biblical, uh, those in Christian leadership should be held to a higher standard than those who are not in positions of Christian leadership. Yeah, yeah it, I do if, like that. if you are on the elder board and you cheat on your wife, you're not going to be an elder anymore. No. Absolutely not. And it's not like, take a year off and then come on back to the elder board. Be like, no, 
this is actually it's a bad precedent to set to even have to, i mean it be I'm, I'm a school teacher if any teacher does anything that is even close to it doesn't even you could cuss out a student and berate a student verbally yeah it's like you're fired and you, you don't get to do you're this not anymore. gonna be a teacher anymore you were you're not this is not for you and everybody knows schools are all christian <laughs> <laughs> but what that reveals is that we we care more about the brand than we do the humans right. often so we would hold that standard true yeah. for the teaching profession but we wouldn't hold that true for church it, depending on the brand, if the if the pastor is really dynamic and really powerful, and it, it takes a lot more for people to turn against them, we want to defend that because it is the brand. And we don't like the good faith version of that is what Cindy was saying. Like I didn't want to hurt Jesus. I didn't want to turn people want, away from Christ. Yeah, I didn't want to hurt the name of God. I didn't want yeah. to hurt the perception of Christianity. And if I bring this out, it will make Christianity look bad, and that will potentially turn people off to it hence why some of people some of the people are v- really angry about our comments about robert morris because there is a version of of that like hey he, he's forgiven so leave it alone he's doing things kind of a thing and that's where i think that's bad theology is forgiven does not mean everything is erased and we it's don't not forgotten it's it isn't it isn't forgotten it's not the same sort of thing so you can you can forgive the senator that doesn't mean complete complete uh ah, the Re- word restoration came to mind but that's not what i'm really or trying reconciliation to get to. or a version of it yeah uh forgiveness does not I'll, I'll put it this way um a woman who was raped can forgive her the rapist they do not need to go back to dating them yes or seeing them ever again no and they can forgive, and that's the problem. With Sorry, Matt. What'd you say? Reconciliation. Yeah, yeah, and that's the problem with the fucked up theology in some of those comments, which is it is saying you should go date the rapist. Logically, it's putting him in a position of power over her or the congregation, and he's not to be trusted. He's already demonstrated that. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's forgiven. God loves him. He's an image bearer of God. That's different. He it, doesn't need to be a pastor. He yeah. Can, he can still sit in the front row. Sure. That's fine. I have no problem with him being completely, 100% forgiven by Cindy, forgiven by God. But rest, restoration back to the original thing, is that's not promised in the Bible, by the way. It's not. I, I've not seen that. I don't know, I don't know where that is. Where you will be restored back to whatever original position you had. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you lose it, you have to get it back once you're forgiven. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, maybe I'm just not. Maybe my two classes I was away from a minor in religion in college are failing me and they would have told me that one <laughs> piece yeah. of the puzzle. Maybe, maybe that's the part that I missed. Maybe we'll we'll learn that in the, in the um, next edition of the comments section. Yeah. <laughs> Can you inform us, commenters? We don't mind all these sexual abuse, but can you guys just stop using the F word? <laughs> and lay off on the beer. <laughs> I love those comments. That's fantastic. You're ruining your witness. Find different adjectives. A lot of those, too. All right. You said it in your hearts. Okay. Rosebubblesbeer at gmail.com. Uh, all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer. If you want to send us a voicemail, yes, speakpipe.com slash Bros Bibles Beer. Like and subscribe. Um, those things actually really matter. I know that people say it and it becomes like invisible to you when you hear this right now, but especially for this channel and where we're at right now in, in the growth of this channel, it does mean a lot and it helps. It puts a little winner in our sales. And guess what? We look at those numbers. And we do care about it. And every time we see new ones, that's why Zach reads the new subscribers because it's exciting for us. And we love being able to see that and it encourages us. Carol so, Susan. Carol <laughs> Susan. And the rad redhead, whatever. Booty Tank 69. <laughs> Booty Tank 69 was one. Are you kidding me? We'll take them. Yeah, we'll take all of those. So thank you. In yeah. the meantime, hit us on all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer for Zach, Jeff, I am Andy Grace. 
Peace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Boom, boom, boom. Matt, that's your new catchphrase. Boom, boom, boom. boom.